Okay, icebreakers. Um, I would absolutely recommend this when you're when you're um, first shaking hands with somebody, walking down the hallway, comment something generic. You know, I mean, listen. If you if you don't know anything about them personally, I mean, you hopefully you've looked them up on LinkedIn. If there's something uh, appropriate. Oh, we went to the same school, or oh, I noticed you used to work. Something something warm is fine. Um, if not, something about the organization. You can always talk about the weather because there's always something to talk about around here. <laughs> Uh, but try to ask the recruiter about themselves. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people are so fo focused on, okay, what am I going to say? Ask. A recruiter will actually appreciate that. Well, you actually care. You know? Well, so tell me a little about your background. Or, or notice on LinkedIn here and there. Or what do you enjoy about this organization? Or how did you get to be where you are? A, little, a few minutes of banter with the, with the recruiter shows them that you care, right? And that you're relational and that you're warm. Doesn't, doesn't telling them that you look them up on no, no, the opposite these days, the absolute opposite, yes. Professional stalking is allowed <laughs> and expected, absolutely expected. They're going to say, if you don't know anything about them or don't know, they're going to say, well, she didn't do her homework. Because this is not 1998 <laughs> when we didn't have any of these things. Then then it would have been, you know, now you, you need to. It'll, it'll show that you're, again, that you're curious and that you're hip that you found them on LinkedIn. And sometimes employers will see you looking at them on LinkedIn. And I've had employers that'll actually, actually, friend, um, friend, you listen to me, link in with you when they see that you're doing that. Oh, please, go, please look on the phone. And I've showed them that you are doing it. It'll be very impressive to them. Um, group interviews, we talked a little bit about that. I'm gonna, I just want to touch on a couple of things here. A group interview obviously is an impersonal process. Would you agree? Okay, mm -hmm. impersonal. To personalize it a little bit more, even though they have to go around and ask you the standard questions that they that they have on their little sheets, you can go to each one of them, go around the room, and ask them a little bit about each one of themselves. Number one, you can ask them how does their position relate to yours? How can we work together as a team? Because typically, a group interview means you're either working with, you're either talking to your peers, right, or you're talking to like one level above, right. Either which way, you need to show how you fit into the corporate culture. You need to show how you fit into the team. Does that make sense? Okay. So you really want to bond with these folks as much as you possibly can. And if somebody asks you a question, don't just respond to that person directly. Make eye contact with every single person because they're asking it on behalf of the group. So you need to speak to the whole group. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's where we're going to get into compensation. This is a, t a tricky one, okay, the whole personal, all the personal questions. Now, any recruiter worth their salt and any hiring manager worth their salt will know about EEOC, about Title VII. They will know not to ask you anything that would possibly get you to talk about your age, race, creed, color, sex, national origin, okay? But some people are just ignorant of this. It's just the way it is. Not everybody knows Title VII, okay? So first of all, forgive them for that. They didn't necessarily mean to discriminate, okay? However, you don't necessarily have to answer. Or, and I realize it can be a little bit awkward when you're trying not to answer. You, you can deflect a little bit sometimes to sort of say, well, um, you know, that's th thanks for asking that question. So are, are you, so, so if they say, um, oh, here's, here's sort of a classic. Um, <laughs> no, no, okay, again, this would be somebody who really did not know the law, okay? They say, so do you have any kids? Mm -hmm. we, we know not to, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But hey, there are people who just don't know. So are you, you could, you could t sort of deflect it back and say, oh, so are you asking the Mr. Employer because you'd like to know whether I can do overtime? Meaning you have to pick up your kids at daycare? Is the, do you see what I mean? You could, you could do a little bit of the puddle jump. It's, it's a subtle, subtle thing. You can, ask, you can answer their question directly. It's not saying that you can't. But if you choose not to, you have to be thinking about some, of your, some response that you would give that's appropriate but that allows you not to answer it. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I just want you to understand, not everybody knows Title VII. Is that a little sappy? Really it you depends think. on how you say it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do with a, with a, with a tood. Mm -hmm. you, you would have to do it very respectfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yesterday, I worked in HR for 15 years mm -hmm. for municipal agency, and I had somebody ask me on an interview, oh, so can you cook? And I know she uh, saw, and it, I was interviewing for an HR job, and I said, can you please tell me how that's relevant? That's it. That's and I know she saw that, it, yeah. It maybe not would have worked there because she was that ignorant yeah. to yeah. ask me something yeah. like so that. So you, you can say, and if you say it in a very respectful way, how is that related to the opportunity? No, yeah, you, yeah, you just sort of said it. always file a complaint with the EOC if they don't hire you yeah. and they ask you a question like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's, this is tricky. This is a tricky yeah. one. It's a little hard to navigate sometimes. Yeah. I just want to prepare you for it. Right. Um, travel overtime. Ask the question. 
they may not tell you in the job announcement or even think to tell you in the, in the, um, in the interview how much travel is required. Not everybody can do 50% travel, especially these days when most of us are into work-life balance, right? Mm -hmm. Ask. What is realistic? What are the real hours here? Not the 9 to 5, 8, 30 to 4, 30, and flex time, and PTO, and all. No, no, no. What's expected? Now, there is an organization, I won't mention it, even though they're very, very popular. There's an organization in this area where they bring in food, lunch, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and dinner. Mm -hmm. If you know this company, do not say their name, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're, they're famous for this. Mm -hmm. Lunch and dinner. Why? Keep working. Keep working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep working. Exactly right. Yeah. Is it appropriate to ask if they have flexible work hours? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely you can. And explain what you mean by that. Like what, what does flex work hour mean to you? Right? right? Because mean, some I people can schedule. So right, you so you can either pick us an early schedule, some people have real flex hours where as long as you're working core hours, you can, yes, for sure. Ask about that. Um, I'm gonna skip compensation for a second and ask do these two and because this compensation is a longer discussion. Uh, tell me about yourself. Here they call it T M A Y. Okay? Tell me about yourself. What do what does an employer not want in a TMA, TMAY? Tell me about yourself response. Well, personal details. details. Personal rambling. details. What? Rambling. Rambling. Things not related to the job. Things not related to the job. How about just a laundry list of your resume? Right. They can see your resume. You do that is it, it's what I call the equivalent of, well, a 1924 was born in a log cabin in the night of home. <laughs> and you know, you start going in your whole personal hit. That's not it. What they do want to know is why are you sitting there? What's your brand? This is what they this is what this is what they really need. What's your brand? Why us? Why now? Why are you here? Right? So, you know, so Molly is in you're in PR, and I don't know the, the type of PR professional you are, but most people PR professionals have a certain, you know, slant, right? You could you could start with that brand, you know? Organizations call me in when they're in a crisis mode. I, I am stellar at crisis communications. Let, let me start by that. Let, so when I read this announcement, right, I really felt an alignment and a synergy because it looks like you guys really, have, okay? Whatever the thing is, go right for it. They can read your resume. They, you do not need to go through a walk unless they ask you to. Okay, so this is the point of the interview where we're going to ask you about your tenure and your work history. Fine, take that time. But that's not the tell me about yourself. You really want to speak to why you're sitting there. Now, oh, weakness is we'll do conversation. What are the weaknesses that most people use? Perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist and I work too hard. I work too hard. I work too hard and I'm a perfectionist. Or some versions thereof. And every employer's heard the same two things. <laughs> Survey says, right? Okay. Um, a weakness should be, and by the way, less and less employers are actually asking weaknesses these days. That's what I've found. But occasionally they do. They want to know you've learned something. They want to know you're growing. They want to know you're self-aware. So, a um, person like me, right, I mean, my, my strengths would you know, certainly be in communicating and speaking and counseling and coaching, all these, but what are my weaknesses probably? What do you think my weaknesses are? Just skill wise. Things that I, I detail oriented? Detail, well, yeah, I do some, but yeah, not a ton. Numbers, accounting, Impatience. huh? Impatience. Impatience, yeah, uh, yeah and, and, and process work, and, okay. I, I'm not good at that stuff. I'm perfectly self aware on that. And if there was a job that I was applying to, that really had a, a chunk of that, I, I'd actually fess it up even before they asked me, okay? And I would probably say to them, you know, this is something that I'm working on. I might even go so far as to say, is there any other support within the organization to complement my weakness, okay? I know where I'm strong, and I hope that this, or this, this opportunity really matches my strengths <coughs> at least 75%. But there is this other part where, frankly, I'm just, you know, just not my thing. And of course, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, right? Yes, and they'll nod their head. What kind of support structures do you have for somebody that I might be able to partner with? Yes. What about disabilities? Disabilities. What mm -hmm. about disabilities? I want, that's a very broad topic. Well, um, invisible disabilities. Invisible disabilities. Yeah, I mean, are they, do you have an obligation to bring them up? And mm -hmm. if you don't bring them up in the interview and it comes up later, is it a grounds for Okay, dismissal? so this is a very, very yeah. subtle, question, and I want to be very careful in how I ask, how I answer this, I am not an employment attorney, I don't play one on TV, okay, <laughs> just for the record. Yep. Um, I, I know I know enough to, to kind of answer your questions, but please don't quote me here, even though this is being videotaped. <laughs> um, okay, so on the one hand, you are under no, a person, excuse me, a person is under no obligation to reveal any 
any, any, anything about their medical history, the disability or not, number one. However, if there is a disability that would require a reasonable accommodation, that's what the ADA requires, right? So let's just say, uh, for example, um, you know, a, a person has a, I don't know, carpal tunnel, right? And you need an ergonomic keyboard, something like that. Or you need, uh, you have a back issue and you can't be sitting all day long and you need a standing desk, something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. You may choose to share that so that a reasonable accommodation can be made. If you choose not to, okay, even if, I should say, even if you choose not to, once you start the job and then you reveal that you have this disability, they are still under an obligation to provide a reasonable accommodation. They certainly cannot let you go because of that by any, by any means. Mm -hmm. But the question is how do you share this? Because once you share it, even though they are not allowed to screen you out, people are human. <laughs> okay? It, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It is very subtle. It is, it, it, there's no one answer to any of these questions. I would just say think very intentionally. You may want to consult with a professional about it. Okay? On, on, for whatever the situation is. Did, was, that, was that good? Okay. okay. <laughs> Compensation. Here's my fun one. All right. How many of you have heard my compensation speech? One, two, three, cool, all right, here it is. This is where your pen and paper comes in handy. In fact, I, I will require you to write this down. You can't not write this down. So let me give you backstory and compensation and um, why I came up with the formula that I did for how to, how to answer this question. Um, when an employer is thinking about offering you a salary, they are trying to offer as Little, little as possible, and you're trying to get as much, much. much. right. Real estate buyer seller, exactly this, exactly the same negotiation process. Would you agree? Right. Okay. <coughs> so, when you are buying or selling a house, you have to have what they call a negotiation, a BATNA, a best alternative to a negotiated agreement. It's a negotiation term. It basically means your bottom line. Below this. I'm not going to take it. I'm either not going to buy it for this amount or I'm not going to sell it for this amount. You need to know in your mind two numbers. You need to know your BATNA. Okay? You need to know your bottom, your absolute bottom. But you need to know what I call your happy dance number. Mm -hmm. Your happy dance number. Okay. Now, here is, here is, here is how this is going to be structured. First of all, if the employer says to you, so, what are you looking for? Here's what you are not going to say, ready? I am looking for a range between eh, to eh. Why? Why? Because they're always going to lowball you. They will not give you usually a penny more than whatever your bottom is. That's human nature. And frankly, they're thinking, and, and I don't disagree with this, it's a good business decision, right? Everybody's trying to save money. But on the other hand, they should be paying you for your fair dollar. But they can't know what you're worth necessarily. I mean, yes, they try to figure that out by what you made in the past. It's a different story. But if they're asking you about where you're where you are now, you start with your happy dance. But let me explain how you do this. Okay, and here's my formula. Ready? So they say, what are you looking for? And you're gonna write the following. Everybody pen and paper. Pen and paper. And if you're watching this, pen and paper. Here it is. I'm seeking a total cash compensation package in the happy dance number <laughs> range. Now, happy dance number is a number, a number. It's 100, it's 80, it's 150, it's whatever, it's, whatever it is, it is a number, it's a number. The only distinction I would make is if you're in, if you're in one of those salary ranges where it's you're sort of like plus or minus 100 or plus or minus 150 or some of that, right, that mushy area, you could say, but you have to understand, there's still subtlety here. You could say, I'm seeking a total cash compensation package in the low 100s. Now, what does that mean? Well, that could mean a lot of different things. You have to know that. I recommend safest, pick a number. Because what will happen? This is, this is exactly how the conversation is going to go. So you say, I'm seeking a total cash compensation package in the $100,000 range. Okay? Right. So if you are in their range, what's the recruiter going to say? You're in our range. <laughs> you're in our range. They're literally going to literally use those words. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're just saying, oh, you're in our range, which probably means to them, oh, well, you know, the, the candidate does, you know, Chris doesn't know that we're really, we're thinking about this position as 90 to 110. 
Okay, so he said 100, we're good. They write down 100 off to the sunset and they're on to the next question. However, if you are above their range, guess what they're going to do? They're going to tell you the top of their range. Yeah. If you said, I'm looking for total cash compensation package in the $100,000 range, and they can only pay 85, if 85 is the tippity tip, 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 tip top, you know what they're going to say? Well, <clears throat> clear their throat, wait three seconds, pregnant pause, and, you know, for this position, the highest that we can go for this, that we budgeted it is, is 85. And then you know what they're going to say? Do you have any wiggle flexibility? Room. Do you have any wiggle room? And then you're going to say, wait, wait, before you get to that, or you get a jump ahead, you're going to remind them what you just said. As I mentioned, um, you know, I'm looking for a total cash compensation package in that range, so yes, I do have some flexibility, and here's your second question, ready? Then okay. paper. What can we do, not you, well, not what you, the employer, what can we do to get me closer to my target number? What can we do to get me closer to my target number? Now they're going to start selling you, you don't even ask, about, they're going to start selling you on vacation and 401k match and benefits and incentive comp program it, okay? Because they understand that you had a target number in mind, we cannot meet that. They actually don't want to lowball for the sake of it, because frankly, they don't want to lose you. Okay? In fact, if they ask the question in the first place, they're probably trying to negotiate. Then they start writing this stuff down, and you've actually had a pre-negotiation con conversation even before you get the talk. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But don't, don't, and especially women in this room, you're worth it. You are worth it every penny. Can I speak to my women folk here? I truly believe, I truly believe that a lot of the reason why we have a pay discrimination and pay inequity in this country is because oftentimes women do not believe in the value of their worth. Come on. And this is the time that it happens. You, you, there is no other time to negotiate because once you get the job, what kind of raises are you going to get? 2%, 4%, maybe. Cola, maybe. This is it. Go for gold. Use that highest number possible. In the job opening, they mention that how much they are going to pay. And uh, they say, for example, 100 can pay um, vacation, this, 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 this. You start with that or you just take that? Okay, like so that's a, let me, let me, let me uh, break that down. Are you saying that they are listing a number or they're listing a range? It was, the what I was using, what it says. 130 k uh -huh. vacation, or holidays, this okay. and that, and that, and that. Right. So, I actually, this is, so, as I was saying, if it was a range, sometimes, like, the government will have, you know, X, Y, Z, and they'll have a funky number dash another funky number, okay? Mm -hmm. But in that case, I actually have done that myself. Um, as a recruiter, I have gotten permission sometimes from certain, from some employer clients to put down a number like that mm -hmm. just to show people that really is what the number is, okay? We're not going to pay less than that. Okay. Now, in my mind, I know... But not often. Sometimes we just sometimes I will literally just say, if I if it is what it is, it is what it is, and we're gonna pay one thirty. Period. Not more, not less, blah blah, plus benefits. Take them at their worst. Take them in that case I would say, I noticed in the job announcement you mentioned one thirty, I'm comfortable with that. What about government jobs like both jobs I've been applying for is I work in HR in government? So what about when they do have the rank? You don't want to lowball yourself, but no. you don't want to highball yourself. Now I would now I will tell you again caveat here. I'm not a federal government expert. For that, I would refer you to Corliss Jackson. Okay, she is federaljobresults.com. Um, she's a mate. She would be the best one to answer that. I would generically say shoot high, just she'll in be general. Coming, uh, 40 plus local local government. government. Yeah, uh, and oh, she's okay. just government. I mean, she's. Okay. That's why I work. Why I work. Oh, for okay. Local I think she'd probably be able to answer local government too. But I think just in general rule of thumb, shoot for the top. Yeah. When you're talking about total com yeah. total cash okay. compensation mm -hmm. package, are you including benefits? And or that's not? why I put yeah. the word cash in there. I used to say total compensation package, in which case people like yourself was like, are you including benefits? And then I would no, cash comp is not benefits. So is cash comp would pay. be would be uh, um, uh, bonuses, mm -hmm. stock options, four one k match. Could even be vacation because vacation is actually worth something. Yeah. Anything that's not part of health and welfare. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what is your uh, thoughts on how predictive LinkedIn's salary indicator is? LinkedIn's salary indicator. Wait, so if you have the premium service? Yeah. They actually. Oh, yeah. Like not very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they can't really know. Can you get that from government? 
government statistics? Yeah, the Labor Department has all kinds of... The Labor Department and Salary.com and any of these sort of major aggregators, I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock. I mean, if you're looking to do a career change and maybe to give you a little bit of a benchmark, but in terms of really understanding, there's so many variables these days and how people decide salary, I wouldn't put too much you know, emphasis. Um, what if you get the question, um, what is your salary history? Are you obliged to answer? Yeah, or? so no, you're not obliged per se, okay? You can say um, if you really, really want to try to. There's subtleties. Again, it's not like. I'm not, I'm not putting my hands on my hips when I say this, okay? What I am, what I will suggest is um, to, if you don't, don't want to, you can say, you know what? Um, for the, I'm, I'm really looking for the right fit, um, and I am, I'm sure that um, we can come up with something fair and equitable. And um, I'm hoping that my, you know, my future, uh, my future performance will be, you know, worthy of a certain amount. And what I've made in the past is not necessarily, re not necessarily reflective of what this job is or where I'm going. That's it's a it's a cagey kind of an answer, and employers will be like, oh, and they'll try to push some of them. If you want to be forthcoming, okay, be forthcoming and do the salary history. However, however, don't just do a salary history give an explanation, okay? Employers are people too, I know you don't think, but they are. <laughs> and they will listen to your story. So whether it was, I had to take a pay cut because it's a recession, had to take a pay cut because I worked for a direct service nonprofit and they just had two pennies to rub together. I took a pay cut, whatever the situation was, or we, I was here but we lost a contract and they had to cut everybody's salary. Whatever the story is, tell them. Say, I'm trying to get whole again. And my whole number is X. Okay, and this is really what I feel is, is, is fair and commensurate for my skills and experience, even if you do answer the question. Yeah. Do you know much about daily rates instead of yearly rates? So daily rates, um, generally rule of thumb is it's about, the hourly rate is about half of the annual, meaning this is very approximate, extremely approximate. So if let's say it's a $100,000 annual salary, that equates to approximately $50 an hour, more or less. Yeah. What if you went the other direction? Uh, a high-paying job, but you're moving into the nonprofit sector. That, and then and I, that's exactly and what... And you're expecting to take a pay cut. How do you make sure that the pay cut isn't catastrophic? I mean, how do you, how do you indicate that, well, I understand I'm not going to get what I used to get. Yes, well, then, that, the, the, then, you, do, point, then you have the reverse Then you have the reverse thing. You still have to have the BATNA. Yeah. You still have to have your minimum number. You know, somebody who's making, again, like 200 but you know you go to a nonprofit and you're okay with with 100. Well, you have to know that minimum. But you know that you know you can't know what you. I, I would I would pick a number that's maybe not your bottom for your that statements you know, but something just a little bit not the the high high number, but something just here that wouldn't totally scare them off, but they could negotiate down a little bit. Well, some applications actually require you to pay salary. Yes, yeah. they do. What, so do, you do, what do you do? You what do you do with a computer? I know. This is, there's no perfect, by the way, no perfect way to do any of this. If there is a space for comments somewhere on that application, there isn't always, write in whatever you can. You know, what I'm, I, even though my salary history was X, I'm looking for Y, here's Y, or some sort of description, any, anything you can. It's not perfect. I wish it was. I wish applicant tracking systems made it easy, but they don't always. Can you leave it blank or does that look evasive? It does, right. it does look evasive, yeah. If they're asking for it, they, yeah. How much information should you give up front when you're applying for a job? You know how you can add attachments, like college transcripts, uh, letters of reference. How much is too much to add up front to attach? Um, I wouldn't go crazy. I mean, in fact, transcripts are, I mean, unless you're a recent college grad, that's really kind of irrelevant. Letters of recommendation, you could add two or three. Um, that would be fine. Um, but I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that's what about. Um, someone was asking about the salary. But, um, I came up with that was on um, one of the forms that I had to fill out for a recent application. They wanted the salary history. That's something that you you're then obligated to fill every it, it, line. In the, they in again, it, if you're if you're not wanting to seem evasive, mm -hmm. fill it out on the application. Or if there's no, if, I'm sorry, fill it out in the on the online form. But if there's no online form, then send it as a separate. By the way separate attachment. This is actually very, very important for the employer. I think you, you will help them out a lot if you do this. Have a separate page for the salary history, number one. Number two, do not put your cover letter and your resume in the same PDF document. Why? 
because you don't know who that resume is going, or who, what hands are going to be touching it. And it could be a hiring manager who, by the way, has no is not necessarily connected to salary. In other words, that, where they're not allowed to see salaries. Some HR people are very uh, have boundaries, okay, around who's allowed to see that confidential information. So if you have your cover letter separate from your resume, then and if your cover letter happens to mention that number, which by the way, you can put this in the cover letter. I'm seeking a total cash compensation package, one hundred thousand dollar range. There you go. You can do that, but make it make sure it's a separate separate document. And, and actually, I am running out of time, unfortunately. Um.